James Hodge. James Hodge. James Hodge. James Hodge. James Hodge. James Hodge out of the group. It's sweet. I've been wanting it for like two years since it came out. Finally got one. First year at Chili Bowl. 1987. We had uh, 35 cars. It was a two-day show. We ran it on Saturday and Sunday. That Sunday we ran against the Super Bowl. We were afraid we'd put them out of business, but I don't think we did. Yeah. <laughs> we could introduce the crowd quicker than we could introduce our drivers that year. I know I'll never forget it. We lost about $20,000 that year. And I thought, oh gosh, I don't know how much of this I can stand. We was probably working for minimum wage the time we got all this in here and what little we made. Roger Penske is our Grand Marshal. Roger come in here and he said, I just wanted to see what this Chili Bowl's all about because he said, when them kids get to Daytona, said that's all they're talking about. He said, I had to come up here and see what this is all about. Oh, late foul. Second away, whoa, 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 whoa. Holderfield from that to Illinois. Seven NASCAR people come in here. I mean, from maybe number three on down. Really? To, and they spent the week up here just to see what was happening up here because there's not another race in the country that has this many cars in one division and that the tickets are sold out a year in advance with a waiting list. And uh, there's just not another race. You know, we've, we've been on pay-per-view, we've been on ESPN, we've been on Mad TV the last uh, 10 years. So when people see this, it's almost unbelievable. So if you're any type of race fan at all, you gotta come see it. Coming from asphalt racing and basically circuit racing, I just got asked by a sponsor if I wanted to run the Chili Bowl and I was kind of like, yeah, sure. Like, I have no idea what this thing is. This is probably actually the biggest race in the country. Everybody wants to win a driller, have it on their mantle. Nothing going on. I mean, it's 30 degrees out here, you know, it's cold, it's, it's the off season, so why not go race? The NASCAR superstars, the drag car racers, the sprint car guys, it's a pretty outstanding deal for sure. The track's small enough that no one can really ever get away. The best equipment, the best motors, we have the best people around, so uh, we're gonna make a really solid effort at it this year. You can't describe it. I mean, it's a it's a big deal. You know, to win the Chili Bowl is huge. You know, it's Chili Bowl and, and luck plays a factor. Man, it, it's the Super Bowl. I mean, that, that's the best way to describe it. The caliber of guys there in the main event is just, there's a lot of people that can win. For a race car driver, it, it can change your life with one race. Just got to be on my game, and I think if my head's in the right place and I'm doing all the right things, we'll be right there with the best of them. What's up, man? Doing all right. Yeah, you? Doing all right. You ready for the day? I think so. Yeah.
Moving's a little bit stressful. I'm now stress relieved. That's trailers in the building, but that's the, making sure you have everything in your trailer, the prep leading up to it, almost four or five hours from here, drive-wise. So as soon as you roll in here, then get the trailer in the building and then start setting up camp for the whole week. Uh, the Chili Bowl is the, uh, for, a, for a race car driver, it is the, um, it can change your life with one race. For the race fan, it is the ultimate party slash you get to see all your friends for the year, plus you get to see some of the greatest racing you'll see in your whole life. Loading all the trailers into the expo center, unloading all the cars, and then some people will install their seats that are rented rides and stuff like that. Prepare the cars for Monday morning practice session, first practice sessions. Gotta straighten up my OCD. be home for the next week so that's gotta be perfect. I had uh, one of the guys that works for me he's like let's go to the chili bowl. I'm like what's the chili bowl like that doesn't sound very fun. So my wife and I we loaded up with them and he's like get ice chest bring some beer. I'm like okay this sounds a little better already. We're sitting there watching and man these cars just kept rolling down the ramp and I'm like man what are these things and, and I looked over at my wife I'm like we're gonna race these. Midgets are <laughs> it's like a little go-kart um, an over horsepower little go-kart. Back in the day, they were much smaller than they, even what they were now. And that's comparatively to a sprint car, they were smaller. So that's kind of where the midgets came from. An open wheel dirt car. Sprint car is a, normally a, like a 350 Chevy motor. Bigger car, bigger chassis. A four cylinder engine in it with, makes about 400, 450 horsepower. Can I get that weird look when you say we're going midget racing? A little harder for my fat butt to get in there. Weighs maybe with the driver a thousand pounds. It's the most violent. It's like wrestling uh, a bear. I've raced sprint cars, I've raced micros, I've raced them all. Just nonstop on the wheel fighting the car. The only thing close to it is probably the World Outlaw 410 guys. Mud everywhere. I mean, it's like a go out there and just have fun kind of sport. It allows you to feel the horsepower with the, with the weight ratio. And a lot of people think they're doom buggies, but they're uh, definitely not. It's fun. It's aggressive. Your elbow's up all the time, and you're never taking a break. And that's the elite of elite racing. The adrenaline junkies want to go there, and that's why you see 360 people. There's never been anybody that walked away and said, gosh, this is kind of boring.
your heat ray starts your whole week and you can't screw that up or you're buried. I'm excited, you know, Chili Bowl. Hopefully we can do good again and kick off the season right. I just gotta be better, you know, clean up the mistakes and be more consistent and uh, you know, it's definitely possible. How'd that feel, Dave? Oh, man, unreal. Uh, two years in a row, proud dad, very proud. First start, I'd say Bernal, you know, got a really good jump, and uh, I had to I'd be in attack mode there right off the bat. And once I got by him, I was just kind of patient and, uh, you know, just, just consistent with the car as much as I could be and try not to make mistakes, and I think I did well with that. The yellows were happening right at the right times when I catch the back of the field, so I was I was happy to see those when, when they came out. And, uh, you know, I learned throughout that race on those restarts, I just had to move around a little bit because Courtney, you know, it was it was either the next restart or the, or the one after that, he was gonna he was gonna clear one, so I had to move around and uh, give myself a fighting chance on those restarts, and I was able to just calm down there at the end and move back down to the bottom when it when it mattered to uh, you know to protect protect the lead.
it's uh, one of the greatest races in the country, I feel, uh, you know, with the time of year, uh, the beginning of the year, January, and it just being uh, in the middle of Tulsa, Oklahoma, in an expo center, a 450,000 square foot building. So uh, with the racetrack, everyone's trailers, race cars, everyone's inside, perfect timing, and it's, uh, it puts on great racing, and that's why everyone comes. The driver accessibility is is huge inside this building. Um, you know, the fans and the drivers, everyone's kind of at the same level. When you buy a pit pass and you come in, there's no, uh, you know, you can walk right into somebody's trailer and say hello to them. to the B, finished seventh in the B, so I missed it by two spots for the prelim feature, which is my first time to not make the prelim in like four years, so it's a little disappointing, but hoping to do some alphabet soup today. People are usually pretty surprised when, you know, I'm a cheerleader, so they're definitely a little thrown off when I say that I drive race cars. I snuck in at 15, so that's the year they went to the 16 rule. May have had a little help from Emmett and s still slid in at uh, 15, but so that's, I'm 28 now. So I think I've been running them since 2008 was my first one.
The cautions aren't terrible. I mean, that kind of gives you time to tune on your car. Um, when you're part of the caution, it really sucks. We ended up with a midget laying in our lap, so that wasn't quite fun. an opportunity for these these we call grassroots racers you know um, they're mixing it up with some of the, the, the top elites and, and and beating them and so everybody's eyes is especially with flow everybody's eyes are going to be on the on the chili bowl this year and and this can make some careers and it can break some careers you know this is what we've been focused on for the last two or three months you know uh, uh, and everybody is. I mean, you know, a lot of people build some brand new cars. You see it, the rigs that are in there, the, the, the trailers. It's ridiculous. But, you know, it doesn't take money to win this deal. It just takes talent, and it, it can happen. Well, you know, I, you know being a Tulsa native, uh, you know, we don't have to prepare near as much as everybody else does. As a matter of fact, um, we're not a, a Chili Bill only team. You know, there's a lot of Chili Bill only teams out there. We actually race with the Power Eye West, um, you know, so our cars are in there, out there every every week racing. Caution, it just kind of depends. If you're at the back, you obviously want them if we get strung out, but if you're up front, then it's kind of nerve wracking, especially if you're in a transfer spot in a, in a B or something. It's definitely nerve wracking because you know what's coming at you. Go about our business, check everything, double check everything. We have a setup sheet list that we go through. We, we've actually probably the only thing we did different is had two different people go through two different lists, you know? So we'll just do our thing. coming here as a kid and I've always watched here. It's definitely, you know, a big turn in my career for me, just being able to compete with these guys. And I'm hoping to move up my career and it's awesome to be able to compete here in my hometown.
these guys started racing, some of them, before I was even born. So, you know, it's been a game changer for me, and it's definitely one of the biggest races of the year. And I'm hoping to be the first female to compete in the Chili Bowl A feature. Well, I don't do much. I just kind of show up and kind of do what I'm doing right now and uh, point fingers at, at Cody and Robbie and uh, you know, Cannon's always got something going here too. And so th this is kind of what I do here. Uh, you know, I've driven for a couple different people and the vibe here is just it, you know, you can't match it anywhere else you go. We're all good friends. Uh, we like to cut up, but we like to be serious when we need to be. Yeah. your head off quick. Cody, he's an old football player and his series is at another level than most of ours, so it's pretty intense, and uh, you know it's time to cut out the jokes and get to work. We're bringing seven cars with, I think, four to five of the drivers that are equipped to run up front, and I think three of them, maybe a fourth one, have a really good shot at making the A on Saturday, and when it's that much, you have to put pressure on everybody to be perfect. I mean, these guys do a hell of a job here at Dave Mack Motorsports, and uh, they know how to get stuff going. They're awesome. You know, we put them to the test quite a bit.
you have at least 300 people. Competing for one trophy, one win on Saturday night. So when you bring in that many people, the competition's just immense. That's part of the reason why so many people enter, and that's why when you win, it's so satisfactory. There's nothing like pulling onto the racetrack on Saturday night and seeing the crowd. The atmosphere there is, is unreal. It's kind of hard to explain it until you see it. We got Tanner Thorson, and I think we got really good chances of running up front this year.